In this video, we talk about how to use the aggregate function in R. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. So first things first, we need some data so that way we can use the ad aggregate function with that data. So the data we're gonna use for this particular example is the chick chick weight data. And this data is provided with R Studio. So if you have R Studio, you probably have the chick weight data automatically loaded into your R Studio platform by default. And you can load it up by typing in chick weight, just like I did here. Uh, if you wanna see what, what this data is about, we can go ahead and throw the question mark in there. And it gives us a breakdown of the columns. So we got weight, we got time, we got the chick, uh, we got the diet, and then we have some details about the information provided. So basically what it's doing is it's a data frame that has 578 rows and four columns from an experiment on the effect of diet on early growth of chicks. So that's what we're working with right here. Now, just to make things simple, I'm gonna go ahead and save this data frame as a two letter variable. So that way I'm not typing in chick weight the whole time. So I'm just gonna do CW and then we'll set that as chick weight. And we'll store it like that. So now I can call the data frame with just CW, you know, saves a little bit of, of time. So let's go ahead and look at the head real quick, head CW. And so we got the weight, the time, the chick, the diet. So there's what we're looking at here in terms of our columns and everything and what that means. And for the sake of example, let's go ahead and pull in our summary data. So we throw this in real quick. And we, so now we get our summary statistics for our columns. So here we have it for weight. And since it's numeric, we get our minimum, our median, our mean, our max, and so on. Same concept over here with time. Chick and diet are categorical data. So they have it broken down by counts of data that we have. And so now we have a little bit of an idea of the type of data we're working with. Now, moving on. So you probably know already that we can go ahead and generate the mean of a column if we need to. So for example, CW and weight will give us the mean for the, the weight column. And we see we get it up here in the summary data, but we also have it broken down by itself down here as well. Now, where aggregate comes in handy is what if we want to know like the mean of the weight based off of which diet they're on so if they're on diet one two three four uh, what are the the average weights for those diets so we can go ahead and get that with the aggregate function so coming on in here we type in aggregate and then we throw in our continuous variable first so the one that we're going to get the the mean of which in our case is weight right so let me go ahead and throw this up here because it's an important concept to remember so continuous variable first then categorical variable so try and remember that with the aggregate function that's that's how it works so continuous variable first we got weight and we can just type in weight we don't have to type in the name of our data frame with the dollar sign we just type in weight because we'll specify the data next then we throw in the tilt tilde right here so I throw in the tilde and then we have our categorical variable in this case it's diet so type out diet and then the next element or argument we have to add to our function here is our our data in which case it's cw and then the next thing the next argument we add is what we want it to do in our case we want to go ahead and add them or present the mean so if we run this real quick we get a breakdown of the different diets and the average weights for each of those diets so we can see that it looks like the fattest chickens are on diet number three right because they have the heaviest weight and the thinnest chickens are on diet number one because they have the lowest weight on average. So that's pretty cool, right? Now what if we want to have another variable here? For example, let's throw time in here and see what happens. So to do that, we just go here to our first variable, add a plus, and then throw in the second variable. We want to go ahead and order by or group by, and we throw that in here, and now we get another breakdown. So let me make this a little bit bigger here so we can kind of look at it together. So it goes by diet, then by time, and then by mean or average weight. So we've got diet one, two, three, four with a time of zero, and then one, two, three, four, time of two. So now we can see the different diets broken down by time and then the average weight over that period of time. So we can see how the different diets perform over the set periods of time. And if we look over here at what time means, it's a numeric vector giving the number of days since birth when the measurement was made. So this is, you know, after 12 days, 
uh, which chicken is the fattest or which diet gives us the fattest chicken. Well, it looks like diet number four gives us the fattest chickens after 12 days of life. And if we scroll all the way down here to the very bottom, we can see that the fattest chickens are actually given to us by diet three here. And we get this number on day 21 of life. So three weeks into life, we see that diet three on average gives us the fattest chickens where diet one gives us the smallest skinniest chickens. Now I'll come back up here to the code area and you can do other options here as well. Like if you wanna do median, you can run it for median or some, you can do it for some or standard deviation if you wanna do that and so on. So that's how you can change the different functions, mean, median, standard deviation, etc. And that is pretty much it for the aggregate function. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you did, I appreciate any sorts of likes, comments, subscribes, anything like that. And I hope you have a great rest of the day.